Today we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And on this day we hear the words of Jesus, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. That is why the Jewish people who are listening to Jesus at this moment are scandalized because they say, how is it possible that this man will give us his flesh to eat? And the Lord will answer, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. So the Eucharist and this mystery that we are now celebrating in which we are entering is to eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And why is it important? Why is it necessary that we eat his flesh? Because the word became flesh. And so God, who directed to us a word that has the power to save us, made that word become flesh so that we may receive that word. So that also our flesh, our humanity may be saved. God has started this history of salvation with the people of Israel. And we have heard in the first reading how God has brought his people into the desert so that the desert, the experience of the desert may open their ears and their hearts that they may receive the word of God, that they may realize that they live by the word of God, God who fulfills his promises and who by his word has the power to recreate them as a people. That's why the first reading was saying, God therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so also the Lord brings us to experience affliction when we're afflicted with hunger, hunger for justice, the hunger for love, the hunger for meaning, the hunger for life. When you experience that hunger, when we are in the desert, it is for us to open our hearts, open our ears, to receive a word from God, so that we may experience that we live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is what the people of Israel experienced in the desert. It was in the desert that God spoke to them on the Mount Sinai. They received the Torah, the word of God. And they have seen the power of that word, that that word had the power to make a covenant with them, to give them direction, to give them light, and to bring them into the promised land. It was the promise of a new life and a seal of the covenant. And so it was in the desert that the people of God received the word. And it is also in the desert of our lives that we may hear the word of God. But that's so that we may receive this word truly. This word not only was directed to us, as it was directed to the people of Israel in the desert, this word became flesh. This word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so God wanted to communicate to us his love so much that he not only spoke to us, but he became flesh. To communicate in that intimacy of our nature all the love that he has for us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so Jesus Christ has experienced the sufferings that we experience because of our sins. He has met us there. He has entered the cross so that he may open the way for us so that we may experience a new life. Because the word of God, whenever the word of God comes, that word has the power to change 
our life, to transform our reality. It's not an idea so that we may be intellectually inter entertained. It's not just something that we understand with our intellect. The Word of God has the power to transform our lives and to make us experience something new. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so to transform our humanity and to bring our humanity to heaven, that is, in our relationship with God. That is why God not only gave us His Word, not only that Word became flesh, but that flesh was given up for us, so that now we may experience through the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ a new life. So what God has said, He has performed, He has done, He has fulfilled, because God always fulfills His promises. And the Word of God needs to be fulfilled. And so when God said, I love you, I want to save you, I want to experience life, God has already done it in Jesus Christ. He has fulfilled His promise. He has given us His Word. The Word that became flesh, and that flesh was given up for us, so we may receive Him into our flesh, into our humanity, and so that also our humanity may be now transformed. And this is the mystery of the Eucharist. We eat His flesh. We not only hear His Word, not only that that Word is among us, but we receive that Word in our flesh, in the consequences of our sins, so that he may free us from our sins and make us experience life. The Eucharist makes present the whole Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, his passion, death, and resurrection. So many times we just see the Calvary, his sacrifice. But this flesh that is given to us is the flesh of the risen Christ. This flesh has been raised from the dead and has been brought to heaven so when we receive Jesus Christ, we receive his whole mystery, not only the Calvary, but the Calvary and the resurrection and the ascension. And this flesh of Jesus Christ has also become the channel for us to receive the Holy Spirit. The whole mystery of Christ, the whole mystery of salvation is contained in this bread that is given to us. So this is the mystery that we celebrate, the mystery of God's love. The mystery that has the power to transform us. The Word of God that has the power to save us, to create us and to recreate us. And so now we are invited to enter into this mystery with faith. That's the only thing that is necessary when we celebrate the Eucharist. To celebrate it with faith. And for, that, for all of us who cannot today receive the body of Christ, we are invited to desire it and to believe it and to ask the Lord that we may gather soon together to celebrate the Eucharist, which is the mystery of our salvation.